engaging your audience. Don't be afraid to interact. It will make it more meaningful. And again, you're trying to get them to remember you for a reason. Maybe you're selling against your competitor, but your ability to engage and animate, again, let's boil it down to 07, you can use the animations tab and the slideshow tab now, not only to create your message, not only to engage, but you also have to double check it, folks. You have powerful new tools on each of those tabs. I encourage you to check and click on those now. If you haven't had a chance to look at those, go ahead and click on that. Because now, again, we have some tools here. They were available in 2003. For sure, you have new op options for you. You have more templates. But most of these commands were found. They were just buried so deeply that you're not going to be able to find them. Now, on that slideshow tab, if you're looking at that right now, Again, this is an ability to rehearse. I absolutely encourage you, even if you're just presenting in front of your team, try and track that. If you've used animation, you've added some audio, make sure the speakers work. Right? This is a powerful application, but it does mean you have to do your homework. You have to check some other pieces. This isn't just a piece of paper. You might have to check and make sure those colors blended. So again, with all of this power so comes great responsibility. So you do want to check. Anything that you've checked, that brings us to the last set of options here, or again, as we're creating around the circle of PowerPoint here, you have to make sure you prep. You're getting ready to distribute. Don't be afraid to use spell check. You have to make sure that the typos are eliminated. So again, we've got some new tools we'll talk about under review and prep, but again, your review tab and your view tab will be very powerful options that you can use, again, as you consider the new changes in 2007. Now, creating a presentation, let's talk about this. Of course, the wow means we've got more choice. We have more graphics, more layouts that are available here to us. As we're thinking about our layouts, those are again found on the Home tab. And if you're looking at the Home tab, you have more options for, of course, designing and for looking at some of the pieces that come together in editing and formatting and making sure that you can create a slide and duplicate a slide right here from that group called slides. So again, if you're looking for these, it's OK to reuse slides. You can change the design. And again, that becomes a more efficient option for you to use your layouts. As you're looking at your themes, bring those two together. The themes now are found, again, a powerful option. You can find these, again, across the applications, not only in PowerPoint, but for Excel and Word, you can brand your message together. So if you have charts and, and, again, documents that support your presentation, they can all have the same look and feel, the same font, the same color. Those formats can be consistent. Folks, that's a professional look and feel. Bring them together. Don't be afraid to use those, again, to unite your message. Keep it consistent. Make sure it fits your brand message. I don't want our marketing departments yelling at me that we're trying to corrupt your branding, all of that good power that you've put behind your brand. But you can complement it. And again, these preset themes that are in PowerPoint let you do that quicker. It lets you do that more professionally within the PowerPoint realm. And again, finally, at the end of our layout creation, we've put some themes around it. You have a 2007 presentation. And again, those come together very nicely to, again, give you a message that you can deliver. Let's move on to the formatting. And this is a graphic designer love. Throw away the Macs. You don't need them anymore. Because you have galleries, and I'm sorry for the Mac folks, but they did it well this time, I have to say. They've expanded the number of colors. You can tweak, you can edit just about anything here. What we're looking at is a, a quick screenshot of the quick styles. You could find that on, again, the home tab, the drawing group, if you'd like to take a peek at that. They have live preview, which means as I look at this and add color, I can quickly take my mouse, I can browse over each one, and my mouse changes. The color changes on the screen. So I can instantly say or assess whether that fits or complements the message that I'm trying to do. Balance the color out, folks. Again, this comes alive on a projector. It looks wonderful. Be careful on handouts. You have options, of course, for customizing what your handouts look like here. Again, these libraries have been expanded. Of course, you can customize anything that you pick, whether it's a font color, a fill color, or an outline. All of that is customizable. And again, the next piece that we're looking at here is just a quick snapshot from our new, again, from the Office button the templates that you can use. 
When you combine those libraries, the galleries, with the templates, again, very quickly you can give yourself a running start and have a brand new presentation, again, that's powerful and more, again, more effective in translating that into dollars back into your company. Now, I love this. Oh, you can see it. Lights, camera, right? Let's animate. Don't be afraid to animate. Again, live preview will save you time as you determine the most effective flow slide to slide. And again, what you're trying to do is create unanimity. And again, as you're going through the continuity of slides, you want to make sure that it makes sense for what you're communicating with your message. The slideshow tab has a very easy setup. You can preview it, rehearse it, and test it, and make sure, more importantly, that your message fits the time slot that you've been allotted. And again, this gives you powerful tools right with the click of a button. Your animation tab also have a, has a chance for you to check the animation, make sure that it fits. A quick tip, if you've never used this before, and if you're looking at your animation tab right now, I, I, I ask you to click that if you're following along with me. There's a group all the way at the end, and when you're looking at your transition to slide tools, make sure that you have, if you have graphics or if you have a transition, that you go ahead and control how the slide advances, whether it's on a mouse click or automatic. Because whether you're choosing the default or choosing to control it yourself, you want to make sure that you have that under control before you get up in front of 100 people. So again, just a quick tip on that. Again, let's go now to the Mac world. We've brought in new picture tools here. It's going to feel like you have an assistant sitting next to you. Why is this important? Well, anybody in direct mail land, anybody in, in marketing or communications, or even if you're just a director on your team, you need to communicate. You don't have to just use words, folks. A picture or a chart will, use a, will tell a thousand words. It's very effective, and for some users, that's the only way they process information. The insert tab is the solution that you're looking for. That's where you'll add a graphic, add picture, and of course, the audio and video is there for you as well. Remember, if you add anything to your slide, you will trigger a contextual tab. You will trigger the format tab in many cases, or chart tools, or smart tab. Again, anything that you're using to edit, you're going to have to use contextual tabs and activate to edit the graphics. Quick tip here for those using images, if you'd like to maintain image proportion while you're resizing, hold the shift key down while you're resizing, or the control key down. One will resize from diagonal, one will resize from the center. But will hold the proportion while you're resizing. That's very, very important. Um, again, whether you're resizing the picture from the staff picnic, your team members are not going to want you to add 10 pounds to that picture by automatically resizing without using these tools. Or, more importantly, if you're using this for logo placement, right? if you're going ahead and picturing a chart, you want to make sure that proportion stays. All right? That's a professional tactic that you want to maintain image proportion throughout the use of PowerPoint. And again, I encourage your use of that. Make sure you balance it against your file size and against your screen that it makes sense on your slide. Let's go ahead and look at some of the security options here in the publishing tools. Now, this is important, folks. Why? If you distribute this, if you send out your document to a group of people, much like we've done today with our PowerPoint slides, portability is wonderful. However, if you've embedded links, that means the links and access into some of your most important files, if you've included a chart, can be, again, compromised or can be tapped by other outsiders. You may want to secure that. You can use some tools, and again, as we're looking at some of these options, there's an inspect, inspect option under the Office button. So again, if you're looking for ways that you can check and make sure there's no personal data, maybe you've used some high tools. Maybe you've, again, chosen to display or not to display. And if you're looking at this, you're going to look at the Office button. Click with me. You can go ahead and click on the Prepare command. And under that command, you're going to find some new options for, again, marking as final, running 